Hello. Today we're working on some cross fencing here and I thought it may be a good opportunity for me to show you some different types of fencing that works well for goats and sheep. Come along. Probably the most common type of fencing that I have on my property is electrified high tensile. I use five strands. I found that to work well. They probably recommend six to eight strands for goats and sheep but five strands has worked well for me. I keep the bottom strand about six inches off the ground. It's electrified. Second strand, six inches above that, it's grounded so that if anything tries to go through those two, it creates a current through them. Third strand, six inches above second strand, it's hot. Fourth strand, eight inches above third strand, it's hot. And then the top strand is 10 inches above the fourth strand. I leave it off so that I can step over it if I need to without receiving a shock. If I had cattle or something or horses in with it, I would probably leave that one on, but I don't. I just run goats and sheep, so I can leave that one off. Biggest advantages of this fence is that it's uh, very cost effective. One of your more economical type fences to put up. It's easy to install. It works well. It's a psychological barrier more than a physical barrier, so it is possible for something to slip through it if they were not familiar with electric fencing. I've never had goats and sheep do that, and I've never found dogs or coyotes in my pasture, so it seems not to be a problem as far as that goes. But if anything touches it once, it becomes a psychological barrier, and they will stay away from it. And so I found it to be pretty effective for predator control. Uh, disadvantages to it is that it, um, it's higher maintenance. Because your bottom strand is only six inches off the ground, it's easy for weeds to grow up and so ground it out. So you have to keep that sprayed or trimmed. You have to have a good fence charging system. Um, you want to invest in good corner posts. You want them buried deep. You want them sacreted in, concreted in with good bracing. But once you have good corner posts, then you can run your line post as much as 20 feet apart. This wire has spring tension on it, so it, it's nice and firm and if something can run into it and it doesn't just you know spread apart real easily if a tree limb falls on it you can cut that tree limb off and it'll spring right back in place it won't have a saggy fence i like that feature of it works great when you run through a wooded area where limbs are prone to fall on it advantages it's economical works well for predator control is effective in keeping goats and sheep in uh, disadvantages higher maintenance you're going to have to keep your fences sprayed uh, you're going to have to keep your fence charging system operating the way that it's supposed to. Overall, I love this fencing. It does require a little bit more maintenance, but works well, very economical. You can fence in a lot of acreage for not a whole lot of money. Let's go look at some other things that you can do with this electrified high tensile. So if you have property, that already has barbed wire in place, you'll probably have to make some modifications for it to be usable for goats and sheep. You can run multiple strands of barbed wire and maybe keep them in, but your bigger problem is going to be keeping predators out. So recently I purchased this property, which was already fenced with five strands of barbed wire. What I did to make it goat and sheep friendly is I moved two of the strands of barbed wire and spaced them out so that I could put a electrified hot wire about six inches off the ground, one strand of barbed wire that's grounded, another strand of electrified high tensile that's uh, about six inches above that, and then run my other strands of barbed wire and just leave them in place. Really all it involved was moving this strand and this strand. Same principles as with your full smooth wire, electrified high tensile, you have to keep it sprayed. Um, but other than that, it's by far your most economical means of fencing in for goats and sheep if you already have barbed wire in place. Probably the most common type of fencing for goats and sheep is your tried and true good old hog wire or field fence, net wiring, or some of the names that it goes by. 
this is definitely one of your lower maintenance type of fencing. Um, if you have goats, there is a stage many times where their horns are just long enough where they'll stick their head through and not be able to get them out. And so you sometimes have to watch to make sure nothing gets stuck. Other than that, there's not a lot to it. You don't have to spray these fences because you don't have anything electrified. So you're not having anything ground out. The uh, advantages, they're low maintenance. Uh, they are a physical barrier, not a psychological barrier. So nothing's gonna accidentally get through them. Disadvantages, main disadvantage is probably cost. Your wire itself and the field fence is going to be more expensive. You're going to have to put your post closer together, probably about eight to 10 feet apart, no more than 10 feet apart for goats and sheep. Um, all of that's gonna add expense. And so that's the biggest disadvantage. But if you want a fence that you put in place, you don't have to worry about spraying. You don't have to worry about keeping it hot, electrified. Uh, the hog wire, net wire, or field fence is a good option for that. Works extremely well for sheep. Goats can have a problem of getting their head stuck in it. And so you do have to watch out for that. If you want to go first class, you can invest in goat and sheep wire, which has smaller openings, I think the two by four inch squares. And so nothing's able to get their head through and get stuck in that. Uh, this is great. It's a little bit harder to install. Uh, it's definitely more expensive. This is going to be your probably most expensive option out of different types of fencing. You can also get maybe non-climbing horse fence, which is going to be very similar to this, maybe a little heavier duty that would be uh, more expensive. But uh, this works very well. It is harder to install. It's definitely more expensive. You're going to have to have the same number of posts, if not more, as you do for the hog wire or net wire field fence. It uh, works very well. You don't have to worry about animals getting stuck. You don't have to worry about animals getting through. It'll keep in even the smallest lambs and kids, but it's your most expensive option as well. But if you have the money to spend and you wanna put up a fence that's going to last that you have no worries with, the goat and sheep wire is a good way to go. One other option is electrified netting. This is a temporary portable type fencing and it's really useful in some situations. Um, the stakes just stick down in the ground and you hook an electric fence charger to it and all of these strands are, have a thin wire running through them that is electrified. This works really well for goats and sheep if you keep the fence hot. It's easy for this to ground out. It'll sag down and touch something and ground out. So a lot of times you have to mow a strip to be able to set this up so that the weeds are, and the grass is short enough that it doesn't ground out. You want to make sure to keep it hot. If you turn it off and one of them test it and they realize it's not on, then they'll stick their head through to try to graze on the other side and end up getting tangled up in it. And uh, you can lose some sheep and goats pretty quickly if you do that. So you have to keep this hot. But it's very convenient if you're wanting to strip graze an area and uh, you can leapfrog your different sections. It is pretty expensive uh, for a roll of this. I don't know current prices on it, but it, it, it's pretty pricey. But it lasts probably 10 years or so. And uh, it works well. I, I really like it for cross fencing a paddock and moving them through the paddock in, in intensive rotational grazing. It works really well for that. I know people that use this exclusively on their land. They don't have any perimeter fence that's a permanent fence. All they use is this temporary electric netting. But uh, this is an option. It works well. It is a little bit expensive. Definitely higher maintenance than any of the other options, but uh, very convenient. You can use it in a lot of different circumstances. So there you go. Those are some different options for fencing for goats and sheep. If you found this video to be helpful, give me a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe if you would like. If you have other eye suggestions and ideas for fencing for goats and sheep, leave them in the comments below. I know the viewers would appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in. Happy farming. <music>